Hey guys, so I got this on 4 13, uh, 2024, 1230 a.m. It's called The Time. And there are three sections to this one. It's The Holy, The Calendar, My Time, and Man's Time. So number one, The Holy. Anointed that are ready, the time approaches. Prepare your heart to stand before God. Then I was given these verses to put under. Deuteronomy 29, 10 to 13. All of you stand today before the Lord your God, your leaders and your tribes and your elders and your officers, all the men of Israel, your little ones and your wives, also the stranger who is in your camp, from the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws your water, that you may enter into covenant with the Lord your God and into his oath, which is the Lord your God makes with you today that he may establish you today as a people for himself and that he may be God to you just as he has spoken to you and just as he has sworn to your fathers to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Joshua 7, 5. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Psalm 10, 16 to 18. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear, to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of earth may oppress no more. Number two, the calendar. The calendar has dates for your convenience. My calendar has dates with events. Pre-chosen dates that will occur on schedule. Know the time. It is man's job not to choose a date that I have already shown, but instead to see the events surrounding a date and know the times. In your times, you know that Christmas is right around the corner when all of the stores, promotional, images are of Christmas. You know it approaches closer when the associated music is playing in the stores. You know it is very, very close when the items related to Christmas go on sale as vendors panic that they may not sell all of their goods. All are given notice of this day as people are not expected to report to work for the day is at hand, the time to be home with family. The day of celebration arrives when the exchange of gifts and special foods are prepared. Then it is the day. Each of my days are the same. You do not need to know the calendar day of the week or the name of the month or even the year. The events leading up to the event are obvious. The events fall into place. The speed picks up. The events needed between people or countries has reached the needed levels. Watching the pace and detail of the events surrounding the main events, explain the date and show the times. Know the times. Then this was at 1.18 a.m. The Hebrew is the fifth son of Hamas, Adalia, and the Greek is to contend or wrestle, to engage in the athletic contest. Then it says, look around you. This does not mean scour the news or look to the stars or even to make connections that do not exist. Trust me as each event unfolds, you will know it. You will feel it in your spirit and you will also see the time and seasons unfold before your eyes. The clues are so that you can see the times upon you and respond accordingly. When you see man begin to rise up against their oppressors, know that the times have begun and your response is to pray. When you see Christians fall and be villainized in the public square, know that prayer is needed to help those in the eye of the target to repent and come fully to me and all others that need to pray in humility to be spared. When you see great weather events that shake the foundations of the earth, know that the time to pray for all affected to not grow bitter, 
but to grow humble before me and to have softened hearts, that of a broken man in need of help from the one true God. Number three, my time and man's time have and always will differ. Who do you suppose shall be right, man or me? I know the times. By staying close to me, mine will know the times, much more so than by watching man. Secular man will deceive purposefully. Christian men will overestimate hopefully. But me, the Lord God Almighty, will not be misled. Be of peace. You will know the times. For each event I will give an urgency and a pace. For each I will call mine to pray. Within their spirit they will feel called. Mine will know events are occurring even without seeing them or being shown by the news, for I will reveal it. All that is coming will have signs, and you will be drawn to prayer. Each sign will bring an increased joy, one step closer to release. Have joy as you see evil rule and increase, not because what you see is good, no, but because as it rises, you are closer and closer to coming home. The way to survive is to be closer and closer into me as it does. I will replace your repulsion for what is occurring with joy. Also, watch the birds, watch the animals. They will be clues for you, for I will draw them to be restless simultaneously, or I will cause them to go into their place of safety simultaneously. I bring order to all those who are watching. You will see and know the times. The only way to navigate all of the events to come is to be in me. This occurs by daily reading my words and by walking in prayer. Then I can guide. Living on your own power and then expecting to suddenly hear or know is not right thinking. I speak with those who are already listening. Listen. 1.44 a.m. Greek is perception, not only by the senses, but by the intellect. Condition, discernment, and moral discernment. And Hebrew is Adar, the 12th month on the Jewish calendar. So the verses I was given for those two is uh, Acts 1.7. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. 2 Peter 3, 8. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Psalm 3115, my times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Habakkuk 2, 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Isaiah 40, 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Benjamin at the airport. In this dream, I heard Benjamin goes first, but only if he did two steps. The first, they must believe God is God. They must have faith that Jesus is the Messiah. If they believed these two things, then they could come. People were slowly forming a line at what appeared to be an airport terminal. There was a TSA type of inspector that had that each person in line had to pass through. If you were not eligible, you could not go. Some were angry. They said they needed to go. Some had long gray wiry beards and they were argumentative, saying they had proof they were of the Benjamin tribe. But the TSA agent was specific. If you could not pass both number one and number two, you could not go. Those that did not believe were taken away and 
they had to exit the airport. There was a boarding order, and this was based on people's standing with Jesus. If you were of Benjamin, but did not believe both number one and number two, you had the chance to change and be baptized by Friday, for the flight was leaving on Saturday. If you passed both number one and number two's inspections, then you were considered a wife status and would board. If you failed the number one and the number two, then you were given a black coat and you were escorted out of the airport. It was shameful to receive the black coat. Then I saw a group of Benjaminites and they were in a different line. They all had cutting boards under their right arm. Those with a cutting board had to go to a different terminal. Their boards would be steamed and cleaned and returned to them. Then they could board later on a different flight. At times I was at the front end of the line and other times I was an observer floating over or watching others so I could understand what was going on. So the interpretation of this is number one, we anointed our getting ready to board. Number two, there are some genetic Benjaminites that do not believe Jesus is the true Messiah. They will be cast out of line and stay for the tribulation if they do not change before rapture. There are some genetic Benjaminites that do believe, but how they cut the word of God is not clean. They wish to interpret it as they see fit, not how God sees fit. They will come after their perspective is cleansed. Rapture after the church is purified or after they stay in the tribulation. Number four, true Benjamins have until the day before translation to get right with God. If they do not meet this standard, they take a different departure date. Now, I thought this was a really interesting dream, but got it around 3 a.m. So I was tired, so I took a nap after my husband left for work, and I had another dream right before I woke up around 9 a.m. Now, I have to preface with this information. For a few months, the Lord had me on a um, genetic genealogy project, going through the Bible and tracing everyone who was related to anyone and taking it all the way down to Christ. So in this time period, I was getting a lot of clues, and you'll see some of that reflected in this dream. I was getting clues as to this person or that person might be related to whoever. So um, just I'm throwing that out there so you have an understanding. So this is the second dream in the same day. I'm at the same airport, and the dream continues. There was a man who came to the terminal, and he wanted to go. But he was denied. He was told he had until Friday to figure things out. It was Wednesday or Thursday. Instantly, he had a piece of brick oven pizza. And like a movie, the view of the dream zoomed in on the crust that had some big puffy bubbles in them. And he was eating the pizza. He went back to the inspectors and asked if he was ready now. And they said, yes, since he had the bubbles in his crust, he could be in line for boarding and fly on Friday. Next, I saw a man who also wanted to go. He wasn't like the rest. He was somehow dirtier and darker, but not terrible. He wasn't evil. He went, he went to the inspection station and he did not pass. They told him the same, that he had until Friday to try and figure it out. Otherwise, he had to leave the airport. He didn't understand. He felt like he was ready. So he looked into the mirror and somehow I could see what he saw. He saw himself completely dark in a dark cloud, but there was a silhouette of his shape. Then I heard the words that rang in his head and it said, if you read the words, you will have light. So he picked up a Bible and he started reading furiously, staying in the airport. He again looked into the mirror, and he was not as dark. He had light surrounding him, and he was able to see all of his features, but he still had a little gray tone over him. He was trying to figure out how to get brighter. I did not see what happened to this man. 
I can assume he kept reading and kept growing brighter. Everyone in the airport wanted to be sure that they were ready for Friday. One thing I did know about the inspectors is that they really wanted everyone to go on the flight, but it was beyond their control. They had strict rules that they had to follow. They kept encouraging the ones that were not ready that they had until Friday, and the flight was not changing. I was fascinated how the inspection staff was actually still letting people get in line. It felt like there was a pressure. Everyone was hustling, but the ones in line and the staff were both relaxed. The staff took their time with each person. Right after I awakened, I was given the simple interpretation by the Lord. Number one, the bubbles in the man's pizza represent the Holy Spirit. He was taking in the Holy Spirit for fuel, and this made him ready. Number two, the man with the darkness, he had to read the Bible, which gave him the light of Christ. But he had much more to catch up on before he was ready. It is always very important when a dream picks up where it left off, and it's a rare occasion. So when it does happen, I always think this is extremely significant. And I pay closer attention to some of those dreams. As if the dream team in heaven that schedules our dreams is like, oh, man, they woke up too early. I've got to get them back into the dream cycle. So this all occurred back on um, October 31st in 2023. But then the following day, the morning of November 1st, I had this dream. And it was so deep in detail, I cannot even possibly unfold it. It started with the people in the airport. But then I was given the first man who I saw who was inspected and got in line. And I was given his genealogy. Like all the way back to some crazy Old Testament named person that I cannot recall, even when I just woke up. Um, Because that would be asking too much because this dream was forever long. And I was told that he was of a firstborn named something that I don't recall. And then I was given a series of various people in his life that he was also related to genetically. I do believe the man I saw in the dream was literal. And I was being given his entire backstory because one of my jobs in heaven is to follow every single person's genealogy to show that they are part of the 12 tribes. So I know that at this point on earth, I cannot conjure up (laughs) those uh, words, but they're in my brain. And when I need them and can access them, the Lord will bring them back. Now, there was something else in this dream. There was something about a woman in heaven and she was mentioned in the Bible, but she wasn't mentioned by name. Like she was mentioned as whoever's wife, you know, somebody's wife. And I was given her name, which I don't remember what it is. And I was told why she was pointed out. Because, you know, there's a lot of women that are never pointed out. There's just a list of men and a lot of women aren't talked about. But then there is something about these few women in the Bible. They're called out. I was told that their faith and then something else they did notable in their lifetime was what made them stand out. And when it says, whatever, whatever, wife of whoever, that's kind of like a footnote expanded in real time of saying, this person did something really special for the Lord. But for me, it was hugely significant because I was being trained about my genealogy project. Now, I know that it was helping me to understand why I was seeing this airport dream and who these people were and why some were ready and some were not. And I have been given several dreams of some of my personal friends, and I have been shown why they are not ready. So I do wonder if they're Benjaminite or not, but I know that there's a definite ready, not ready thing going on. So when I woke up, of course, I'm freaking out thinking, I can't remember all these names. How am I going to write all this down? I was kind of like freaking out. But then that same day at 3.30 in the morning, um, after this dream, I got these words and it was, your dad is Benjaminite. This line is the one for Benjamin. Your cousins have dirty cutting boards right now. They do not understand scripture properly. 
Isaac was the firstborn after Abraham's name change, making him royal. Benjamin is the firstborn of Israel, making him the royal line. Look at Jacob and Israel in the Old Testament and the prophets again and read with this in mind. So I'm going to share with you this chart. Um, what happens is God speaks to a man. He's already having a ongoing conversation. Okay. God defines who he is. Usually he tells the man to move usually out of the area in which he is living. God wants them to listen and obey him. And then God shares the blessings that are to come. Then this man will have, um, with his wife, a child that is the first child. Now, later in this man's life, God will appear to the man and then God will make a covenant with the man, which God creates the terms of the covenant. And God has promises to those who fulfill the terms of that covenant. And then God changes the name of the man, that new man. So the new named man and his wife have a child. That child is called the firstborn. So the child after the name change, the child of promise or the firstborn in God's eyes. I'm going to show you a few examples so that it's really clear what's going on. God speaks to Abram, Genesis 12. He's age 75. He says, move, follow me. And here are the blessings that are coming. God appears to Abram. Abram builds an altar to God, Genesis 12. Genesis 15, God speaks to Abram. Abram builds an altar to God, and God puts a deep sleep on Abram. Age 86, Abram and Hagar have the first child, Genesis 16, Ishmael. Later, it says that that child is blessed. Then, after this first child is born, God appeared to Abram. God makes a covenant with Abram, Genesis 17, and then God gives Abram a new name. At age 99, Abram becomes Abraham, and he has promised a son at that time. At age 100, Abraham and Sarah have Isaac, Genesis 21, and he is called the firstborn or the child of promise. Now, to clarify... In the successive verses, I'm going to summarize this. There's a promised son, okay? So God says, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her and also give you a son by her. And she shall be the mother of nations, king of the people shall be from her. So Abraham um, says, shall a, in his mind, he's thinking, shall a child be born to a man who's a hundred? And then he's thinking, and Sarah, who is 90, is going to bear a child? And he's like rolling on the floor laughing at this thought. So he says to God, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. He's like, clearly you're talking about Ishmael. And God says very firmly, no, Sarah, your wife will bear you a son and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish a covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. Then God says, and for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and I will make him a great nation. And then God says, but my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at the set time next year. So. Ishmael is a blessed child and he has his own set of nations that all develop and there's a lot of people in those nations. And then Isaac is the firstborn child of promise and he has what becomes the Israelites. Okay, so in order to understand how Benjamin is the firstborn, we have to look at um, Jacob's life and that's a lot more complicated. That's why I started with Abraham because it's pretty simple cut and dry. But um, God speaks to Jacob in a dream and he says, I am God. Here are the blessings and I will protect you. Jacob builds an altar to God and promises is to give him 10% of everything. So that's Genesis 28. Genesis 29 through 30 is uh, basically Jacob, Leah, Rachel, Zilpah, 
and Billah all having these uh, 11 children. So Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dinah, Gad, Asher, Dan, Naphtali, and Joseph. Okay, now, then God speaks to Jacob in a dream. Then um, he tells him to go to a different place. Angels meet him at this place, and then he wrestles with God. The next big incident is God speaks to Jacob in a dream, and he says, move and make an altar. So God appeared to Jacob at this time, and God makes a covenant with him. So he says, basically, I am God. You need to have a baby, and you're going to have a nation and a company of nations. The kings will come from you, and Abraham's land will be yours. Then he changes his name. God gives him a new name of Israel. So then he obeys. He's going to go have a baby. And it's Israel and Rachel, and they have Benjamin. This becomes the firstborn. So Deuteronomy 33.12, of Benjamin, he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell safely by him, who shelters him all day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Matthew 20.16, so the last shall be first, and the first shall be last, for many will be called, but few chosen. Psalm 68, 27, there is little Benjamin, their leader. Now, let's go backwards and look at this family. We had Reuben, who was the actual firstborn child, but Reuben had an indiscretion within the family, so he was demoted, and he did not get the first child blessing. Joseph was the first child of Jacob's favorite wife before his name change. Those children that Joseph had came into the family after Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So he blessed his grandchildren with the first child blessing, and he did them in reverse. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. So Manasseh and Ephraim, Ephraim got the blessing over his brother Manasseh. Um, then Judah, it was said that he will always be in leadership or in charge of the nation. That is who is running the nation now, and that is where they expect their Messiah to come through the line of Judah. Now, there's one very interesting parallel to this. Um, the entire concept of after the name change, the child born after that being the firstborn or the blessed one, okay? So here, God speaks to the Hebrews. He defines who he is. He tells them to move to a new land. God wants them to listen and obey. God shares the blessings to come. The Hebrews um, and the wife, that's the whole group of Hebrews, um, this is the first child or the Israelites. Galatians 4, 3. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Then God appeared to man through Jesus. And God makes a new covenant with the people. The new covenant, God creates those terms of the covenant. God has promises to those who fulfill the terms. What is the new covenant? That is accepting Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And then God gives a new name to his people, which is Christian. So Galatians 4, 4 to 5. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. So the new named family member, Christian, and the wife, which represents the entire church. So the firstborn or the church, the firstborns, okay, that is Galatians 4.28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. The child after the name change is the child of promise or the firstborn in God's eyes. Galatians goes on to say in Galatians 4, 28 to 28, clarifying all of this. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic, for these are the two covenants, one the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to the bondage, which is Hagar, for 
This Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Okay, so I hope that helps clarify. On 4724, I had another part to this Benjamin at the airport dream. So there was a group of people, and they were in a group together waiting for TSA. Then God spoke. You are surrounded by my people, but you are not mine. You cannot come. You know of God, but you are not in covenant with God. Remarkably, on 5, 10, 24, 9 a.m., I got a fifth part to Benjamin at the airport dream. So I was shown people returning from the Friday flight, and I heard Sunday there will be miracles. I came on a Friday. We were trained and then returned on a Sunday. Then the dream zoomed in on certain people at the airport who were in line hoping to leave on Friday. There was this man, he was 58. He thought his porn intake did not matter. How could it affect anyone else, he thought. But he was exposed and shamed because he was not ready for his departure on the Friday flight. He was told to return for the Tuesday flight, but he was still not ready on the Tuesday flight and he was told to leave the airport. There was a woman. She always used alcohol when she was sad. She didn't think it mattered. She was shown as dirty and not having faith. She was not ready to leave on the Wednesday flight. She was escorted out of the airport. Many others came to the airport, more than you would imagine. Long lines were in line to be inspected by the TSA staff, but only the people who were shown to be approved were allowed to fly. If they missed the second or the third flight, then they had to stay for the last flight, which was the rapture plane. If they missed the rapture, they had to stay for the tribulation. In the dream, I was told this. They missed the second and the third flights because they thought their sin was only affecting them. But I was shown that it affected the whole group and only the pure holy and set apart would be eligible to fly. I was also told that most that stayed had rejected the basic fundamentals. They had willfully chosen to reject them. All some had to do was to be obedient and be baptized. Others needed to have communion and come before God realizing their sin and repent. A second group did not make it because they refused to give up their carnal desires. All of them felt that what they were doing was okay for they had been told this from their churches, but they had failed to read the word and see for themselves. Further interpretation. The man who was 58, Strong's 58 Greek means the marketplace. So that means he's of the world. Strong's 59 in Hebrew was only used one time in the Bible in Judges 11:33, And it is part of a city's name. The city is Wheat Meadow. But this verse was not used in a nice way. Here's the verse. Judges 11.33 And he defeated them from Aurora as far as Minith, 20 cities, and to Abel Kerimim, which is the wheat meadow, and with very great slaughter. Thus the people of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Okay, so these are the verses that I was given for this entire Benjamin at the airport series. First Peter 1, 13 to 21. Therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and rest your hope fully on the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as 
He who was called is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but it was manifest in these last times for you, who throughout him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Hebrews 12, 12 to 17. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather be healed pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the lord looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and by this many become defiled lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. And then Galatians five sixteen through 26. I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you are not under law now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Um, so I think this series of dreams points out that God has a very high standard. And in our day, we have not acknowledged this or the concept that we need to focus and be fully set apart, sanctified, consecrated, and holy in order to be seen as acceptable by God. Those of you that are ready, I hope this has been a great encouragement to you. Those of you who know you need a few tweaks Get ready before that Friday shows up because we want you on the plane. I hope this has been an encouragement and see you next time.